Hello everyone, welcome back to AS and A Level Biology with Dr. Demi. I'm Dr. Demi and in this video I want to show you how to do the Pearson Correlation Test. This is part of chapter 18, so if chapter 18 is one of your least favorite chapters, I just want to say that these correlation tests actually make it a bit more exciting. And I know that sounds very, very nerdy for students because they're like, wait, what? Uh, but most of chapter 18 is about you trying to recall information on the different kingdoms and domains and also like the different types of sampling that you can do, um, such as systematic sampling, random sampling and all of that. So these calculations sort of put a break into the memorization, if I can call it that, and help you apply. Um, information differently. So in my previous video in chapter 18, I showed you how to do the Spearman correlation test, which has to do with ranking the values that you get. The Pearson correlation test is a bit more straightforward than that. So I'm hoping this video will not be too long. Um, so let's just get into it. Um, I would advise that you have a pen, a paper and your calculator close by so that you can sort of follow some of the calculations and even do some of them by yourself because uh, some of the values are already calculated. So again, bringing you back to the idea of what correlation is about, um, it basically sticks to show if there's a relationship between two species or between an organism and a factor within a sample site. So with your biology exam, when you're doing correlation tests, you're actually checking to see um, the correlation maybe between two species in a particular quadrat. So if you don't know what a quadrat is, I suggest that you watch the videos on um, random sampling so that you can get an idea of what that is. But basically, a, a correlation test just seeks to establish a relationship, and the value of the correlation test is usually between 0 and 1. You never have a correlation value that is above 1. The closer to 1 the value is, the stronger the correlation, and the closer to 0 the value is, the le um, less the correlation, um, the lesser the correlation between the two species or factors you might be investigating. So again, the two different types of correlation, this is just revision that I've done in the first video on Spearman's rank, but I just thought it would be good to refresh your memory here. Um, the Pearson correlation is used when you can see a linear correlation. So what you would usually have to do if this is a big question in the exam is they give you the values and they'll give you graph paper. And for you to see if you should use Pearson or Spearman's, you have to plot the two um, factors you're investigating against each other. So you plot them and you see if they give you a straight line um, trend. If they give you a straight line trend, so that's what we would call a linear correlation. And also if you have quantitative data, then you use the Pearson's correlation test. The Spearman's correlation test is used only when there is no linear correlation, when the data is not, quanti is not quantitative, rather it is more of an abundance scale. So for example, you use Spearman's if you are speaking about the percentage cover of something. So if I go into a field and I pick a certain section, I can say the percent this section is covered by maybe grass for 80% of it and the rest of it is covered by shrubs. So in that case, I'm not giving quantitative data as such. I'm just reporting an abundance of the occurrence of certain species. So if you're dealing with abundance, you, you use the Spearman's rank correlation. If you're doing dealing with quantitative data, so that's direct quantitative data, where I say there are five um, grass shoots here or there are 10 trees in that case then I would be dealing with Pearson's correlation so just making that clear to you um, as much as possible and also here if the data is not normally distributed sometimes you don't get to see that from what the data looks like so I wouldn't worry too much about that um, if I were you so if you want to calculate the Pearson's correlation test, this is the formula that you use. Don't stress too much about it. Um, it's a very easy test. I think it's a lot easier than the Spearman's rank correlation because with Spearman's rank, you do have to pay attention a lot, um, especially when you're doing the ranking so that you don't make any errors. But with Pearson's, everything is really straightforward. You deal with standard deviation, the mean values and all of that. So I think on the next slide, I'll just show you some of that. So to do the Pearson's correlation test, the one that I'm just going to demonstrate very quickly on this video, I have taken an example from the textbook. Again, the textbook I'm using is the Cambridge AS and A-Level Biology course book by Mary Jones et al. Um, I, I don't know if it has been updated, but you can look out for it and maybe purchase a copy because um, that would be very helpful for you. 
So in this example, which you would find um, somewhere in page 501, I believe, um, it has um, the quadrat. So the quadrat, again, doesn't feature in this formula. So I'm just going to use my red pen here so you can see. That's the formula for calculating the Pearson's correlation. Um, and here you have the quadrat. What this is simply telling you is the number of data points that you have, more or less. So the number of quadrats is equal to n over there okay so in this case we have 10 quadrats so n is equal to 10 for our example here so that's that then if you look at the formula a little bit closer you will see here that it has the summation of x times y minus um, n x bar y bar n s x s y um, all of these stand for different things so x um, would be your first species so for example this would be x um, and y would be your um, second species, which is that one over there. And then x bar would be the mean value of these species over here. So you know how to calculate the mean. You add all of these numbers together and divide it by the number of um, data points that you have. So that would be your x bar. And you do the same thing for y or your second species in order to get y bar. Now to calculate standard deviation, this is the formula, but we're not going to go into it here, but I just thought to highlight it. And the reason why we're not going to go into it in detail is simply because in most of the recent questions I have seen with CIE, they give you the value for the standard deviation. So here is something that you need to look out for. If in your CIE question, for example, it says that the mean value of this um, data set is 14 plus or minus 2. This 2 that comes after plus or minus is your standard deviation. So don't spend your time trying to figure out what standard deviation is. So let's assume that this was for species X. Then that means that X bar, which is the mean value for X, would be 14. And in this case, SX would be 2. All right. So the value that comes after the plus or minus that is attached to the mean value is the standard deviation. So usually this is given to you. You just have to plug in the numbers. All right. So now let's look at this. Um, now, this is our example, and I just figured it would be fun for us to maybe work on it together. Um, and again, you can see that the standard deviation has been calculated already for these data points. But if you want to try and check if that is accurate, you can use the formula here. So this is the formula. You can use this formula here to calculate it. All right, so first things first here, if you are working with Pearson's, is to look at what the formula is asking you for. And I always tell students, just work on the basis of that, like start from the left to the right. Um, obviously, you know this is what you're calculating, so you don't touch that. But you come here and you see x, y. What that means is x times y. Um, so I'm just going to erase that circle so you can see it clearly. This means x times y. So we can just do that calculation here very quickly. Um, 21 times 10, that would be 210. Okay. Um, 9 times 20, I believe that's 180. And I hope I don't make any errors here, but I do have a calculator close to me. Um, so 22 times 11, um, that would be 242. So I'm just doing this and you can go faster than I am um, if you're able to. I, I think that would be a good thing. Um, 19, um, 7 times 17, that would be 119. 8 times 16, um, that would be 128. Okay, 23 times 14. Um, my calculator is acting up over here. 322. 10 times 20, that is um, 200. 12 times 24, that is 288. 288. 12 times 22, that's 264. And then 9 times 19, that's 171. All right. So that's this part of the formula done already. Okay. Um, 
the next thing that you have to do is add all of it together. So this symbol here means add. So you have to add all of these together, um, which obviously you can just go on your calculator from the last number upwards. So that would um, help you. So it would be 171 plus 264 plus 288 plus 200. Plus, and please use a calculator for this because I find that students try to be like, oh, well, you know, I'm good with math. Um, so I'm just going to um, try to calculate this off by heart. Uh, please use a calculator. Don't depend too much because um, you want to be error free as much as possible. Obviously, you can calculate it off by heart and check again with a calculator. But the point is just make sure your answers are accurate. So if you add all of that together, you get 2,124. Notice that this is not a mean value. It simply says add up this multiplication of these two. So please don't take the mean value. All right. Now we know that n in this case is number of quadrants, so it's 10. But we need to find x bar and y bar. So let's look at x bar. x bar means we calculate the mean value um, for the data points that are x. All right. So that would be our first set of data. So that would be 10 plus 9 plus 11 plus 7 plus 8 plus 14 plus 10 plus 12 plus 12 plus 9. Um, I'm just going to erase that so you can see very clearly that 9 is the last number there. And obviously, you divide that by the number of um, data, data, data points that you have. right? So that means you're going to divide whatever answer you get over there by 10. And in this case, the main value is 10.2. You repeat the same for the y value. Um, so that would be 21 plus 20 plus 22 plus 17, plus 16, plus 23, plus 20, plus 24, plus 22, plus 19, right? And you divide that again by 10, and the answer here is 20.4, okay? So we have 20.4 there. So what we've done now is we have basically calculated all the different terms that make up this formula. And we now want to put them together to calculate the value for R. Remember that R is the correlation coefficient and it's usually between 0 and 1. Something else that I did not mention at the beginning of this video that I think is really important is that when you are doing a correlation test, you will often be asked what your null hypothesis is. The null hypothesis is always, irrespective of the kind of correlation test you're doing, that there is no correlation between the two species you are looking at or between the two factors you're investigating always states that there is no correlation. That is the null hypothesis. All right. So please bear that in mind. It's very important. So now let's look at how we get our R value. So R in this case then will be equal to, we have that value, the summation of X, Y, it is 2,124. And then we have over here, um, this might not look really pretty, but we have 10. So I'm putting that in brackets because we have to work that out. 10 times X bar is 10.2. So 10 times 10.2 times Y bar is 20.4. Okay. So we can, what I often advise them to do is resolve what's happening here at the top first. Okay. So if we do 10 times 10.2 times 20.4, we will get a value of 2080.8. So R in this case is 2124 minus 2080 plus 0.8. Um, so 2124 minus 2080.8. And so we get 43.2 here on top. And we are now going to divide that by this multiplication here. So again, the standard deviation is being calculated for each of the different species. But if you want to give it a try on your own, please give it a shot. This is the formula here. You just take X, which is this value, which would be one value, minus X bar, which would be the mean value that you get. You square whatever that is, and at the end, you sum it up together. Uh, but I think I can do a different video on how to calculate standard deviation. 
um, just so that it's clear for those who might be confused. But again, usually in the exam, this is given to you. So we have 43.2 there divided by 10, which is our N value times the standard deviation of X, which is 2.1, um, and the standard deviation of Y, which is 2.55. So we can just work that out. Um, use the bracket function on your calculator. And the value that we get there is R is equal to 0 0.81. Um, that's if you approximate. Um, something else I just want to say here is that with CIE, something you might want to pay attention to that many students don't, is that you should always go with the number of decimal places that you're given. Obviously, I did not do that in this question, uh, but I was still able to get the answer. But if you look at what was given, the standard deviation, for example, was given, um, it was summed up to two decimal places. So when you are reporting any of your answers that have decimal places, you should actually have um, the second values here as well, which I didn't do. So I'm just pointing that out to you so that it's clear. Um, and so in this case, R is equal to 0.8 one which is also what they got in the textbook and this means that there is a strong correlation between the two different species so in this case because there's a strong correlation and your null hypothesis is that there is no correlation you reject the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis says there is no correlation as it should always say and your r value for example comes out to maybe 0.2 this is very close to zero, all right? So that shows you that there is no correlation. In that case, you accept the null hypothesis. So that is it on how to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient. I hope that you found it very straightforward and easy. If you were doing, if you're doing the standard deviation and you get stuck, just leave a comment and I will try to do a video on standard deviation in that case. Until the next video, everyone, have a good time.